Hello, welcome to HITC Sport. Right, a few days ago I did a world squad of 23 players featuring one per league. The reaction in the comments had fans from all over the planet speaking about the likes of Carlos Vela and Andre Pierre Gignac as world class talent with zero self awareness for the fact that they're playing in pudding leagues. So today, let's again do a 23 man squad. Again, one player per league. Uh, but, um, one overrated player per league. And for all the Americans out there, God, I can't wait to talk about Carlos Vela. Goalkeeper at Gianluigi Donnarumma Serie A. Yeah, I'm not for one second saying that Gianluigi Donnarumma isn't a good keeper. He has nearly 200 games for AC Milan at 21 years of age. Baby years for a professional goalkeeper. For Christ's sake, when Alison Becker was that age, he was a backup goalie out in Brazil. But ever since Donnarumma's debut, this guy has been tipped to become not only the best keeper in the world, but Emile Buffon and become one of the best of all time. Well, for that to happen, he'd have to command the world transfer record fee, almost single-handedly restore AC Milan to Champions League glory, and be a future World Cup winner. He's a promising keeper, but forget the name AC Milan for a minute. They've been a mid-table club for over five years. So, at the moment, Donnarumma is a mid-table goalkeeper. I don't see anyone saying Jordan Pickford's gonna be a World Cup winner. Goalkeeper Jonathan Klinsman, Swiss Super League. This man is coasting on the strength of his family name. 22-year-old Jonathan Klinsman, yes, son of Jürgen, is a Bayern Munich Academy outcast and has just two caps for United States under-23s. It wasn't so long ago this guy was getting linked with Rangers. And according to his former coach at Hertha Berlin, he's one of the most promising shot stoppers on the planet. I mean, is he? Ever since signing for St. Gallen in Switzerland, he's been left out of the starting 11 for every league game. We're sent off in the cup. Had he been spat out of a different ball bank, nobody in Britain would know who the hell he was. Centre back Dayton Upacamano, Bundesliga. Dayton Upacamano was arguably the most hyped defender in world football. Like, I get it, alright? He's a top player for RBC Leipzig, the classic football hipster's favourite club. But, but, lads, the voice of football hipsters, it is loud. They were the ones waxing lyrical about Shinji Kagawa at Borussia Dortmund, hailing Michu as a future World Cup star. At, well, at Swansea, the ones who desperately try to convince themselves that Athletic Bilbao's Iker Munian was destined for Ballon d'Or greatness. Mark my words, like the 21 year old Ubicamano slapped with a massive 60 million pound price tag and compared to former World Cup winners, despite having less than 10 Champions League appearances under his belt, within five years he's probably gonna join this elite list of forgotten hipster favourites and probably end up in Turkey. Left back Gael Clichy Super League. Okay, I'm just trying to find a pick for the Turkish League. I suppose Gael Clichy at Istanbul Basak Sehir. You might say, oh, we never raised him in the first place. To be fair, you have a point. But someone did, because despite possessing a brain which views defending as a clear afterthought, this guy managed over 450 games in English football. And for big clubs, centre-back Harry Maguire Premier League. If Harry Maguire had not scored this goal against Sweden, he would still be at Leicester. He's a good player, yes, but uh, that's about it. When you look at Manchester United captains, Brian Robson, Roy Keane, Harry, Harry Maguire. Christ, even saying those words takes like pigeon testicle stuffed in my mouth. The guy with a TV head is worth 80 million pounds. The second most expensive player in that club's history. No, this club used to chuck mid table defenders in the bin, not spunk the budget up the wall to drag them in. Maguire is a decent, no, he's a good defender, all right? But he has the transfer fee and wages of a bona fide superstar. And can you honestly tell me He's any better than Johnny Evans. Left back Ricardo Rodriguez, Eredivisie. Thankfully the hype has now died down a bit about Ricardo Rodriguez because a couple of years ago it was mental. After impressing for Switzerland at the 2014 World Cup and then Euro 2016, the guy earned a big money switch from Wolfsburg to AC Milan. This is why you shouldn't sign a player off the back of one international tournament where once he was getting linked to a 30 million pound move to replace Luke Shaw at Man United, where once he was earmarked for Real Madrid, now he's 27 and struggling for game time alone at PSV. Centre back Steven Taylor, A-League. Steven Taylor is a god in the Australian A-League right now, captaining Wellington Phoenix and I know some Aussie lads got help them. One why he's not getting picked for England. Lads, don't even go there. Anyone who saw him defend during his tail end years at Newcastle knows that he's about as trustworthy as pig vomit. Centre back, Josie Angel Crespo, Super League Greece. Josie Angel Crespo is one of the most highly rated defenders in Greece. Fair enough, he's rebuilt his career with 150 games for PAOK Salonica. But please stop linking him with big European clubs. He's a. Uh... He's been relegated four times. Would you sign Nigel Quashi for Real Madrid? Right back, Kevin Teofile Catherine, Croatian First Football League. Similarly, Kevin Teofile Catherine has rebuilt his career in Croatia with Dynamo Zagreb, but are we forgetting his criminal brand of defending? Drawing 28 games with Cardiff in that relegated 13 14 season. There's a guy who formed a back four who shipped six at home. Suarez and Storage effectively shoved this guy's career in a blender. So calm down, Croatia fans, alright? 
He's not that good. Right back, Andreas Ulmer, Austrian Bundesliga. Okay, let's be honest. Who overrates a right back? Andreas Ulmer is a 34-year-old captain of Red Bull Salzburg. A veteran of 11 years for that team. Probably not particularly overrated, but hey, I need someone from the Austrian Bundesliga, so I'm going for him. And the fact he only has nine caps for his country sort of strengthens my argument. Centre midfield, Oscar, Chinese Super League. I'm sorry, but where did the hype for Oscar ever come from? Was it because he burst out of the scene for Brazil at the 2012 Olympics? Well, guess what, lad? Joe Allen and Scott Sinclair were at that tournament. And you don't see them getting bags of cash spunked up their nose in China. Even a Chelsea Oscar flattered to deceive. Mostly looking like a lightweight candlestick. A malnourished child escaped from the orphanage. Look at that upper body strength. What does he eat for breakfast? Two Mars bars and a bowl of twigs? So how on earth did he land a job worth 400,000 pounds a week? The head chiefs at Shanghai who willingly forked out for that sort of cash. I hope the last three months of self-isolation has sort of made them question their decisions in life because Christ above. Centre midfield, Jude Bellingham, Championship. Jude Bellingham, 16 can leave from £145 to £100,000 a week as Man United, Real Madrid and the rest of Europe's elite chase wonder kids. Listen, I don't want to start bullying 16 year old children on the goddamn internet, but if he starts commanding wages of £100,000 a week, then... I mean, the world is about to enter a financial crisis. I mean, do you remember the 2002 World Cup? This guy doesn't. He was a snapped condom away from existing. This fella's childhood idol is its probably Deli Ali. Lads, he has just over 30 career games under his belt for Birmingham. Sure, he might turn out good, but big money speculation links to Real Madrid. Tipping him for Euro 2020. Does no one remember John Bostock? I mean, how is this health? When I was 16, this... This sort of pressure would have melted skin off my face. Oh, by the way, let's try an F4NK as soon as possible. If you enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button. And, uh, yeah, back into it, really. Center midfield, Renato Sanchez, League 1. He's a... Is Renato Sanchez still overrated? This is a perfect example of a man who let hype swallow his potential hole. Yeah, he's still only 22, but it was this guy. Not Joe Felix, seen as Portugal's next big thing. And now he's just a 25 million pound sack of cement parked in Leeds midfield. Centre midfield, Julian Weigel, Premier Liga. Okay, maybe this is harsh. To highlight Julian Weigel as the most overhyped talent of the Portuguese league. But I'm sticking with it, lads. After bursting out of the scene for Russia Dortmund in 2015, this guy was hailed as Germany's next big thing. And he recently found himself stuffed on the bench under Lucien Favre, was allowed to leave for Benfica in a 20 million pound deal and hasn't represented his country for three bastard years. Centre midfield, Nabil Fakir, La Liga. Okay, listen, Nabil Fakir is a good player and could jam his World Cup winner's medal down my throat. But I'm sorry, you are one of the most overrated players on the planet. The scramble for this man's signature while captaining Leon, a target for Liverpool, Chelsea and Real Madrid. Well, if he's that good, why did he end up with Real Batiste last summer? Look, there's no shame, all right? There's always that overrated transfer target linked with half of Europe's elite. In the past, it was Joaquin, Stefan El Shawari. Miguel Veloso, media darlings, but who never actually got that big move. He's a good player, yes, but Barcelona and Ballon d'Ors. Fakir, the only way you're getting your hands on that trophy is if you rob it from Messi's house. Forward, Karamoko Dembele, Scottish Premiership. Yeah. Here come the angry Celtic fans, no doubt sending me bullets in the post. Look, I know Karamoka Dembele is your hotly rated prospect. The next big thing, Lekeep named him as one of the best six youngsters on the planet. Lads! Calm down. Sure, he was making his debut for Celtic under 20s at 13 years of age. Great, but this is an academy which inflicted the likes of Charlie Mulgrew and Darren O'Dea upon the world. If that's the caliber of defending stuck in Celtic's youth teams, you could probably chuck a pregnant cow into a five a side, and they'd probably display a better touch. Look, I understand that fans of Scottish football need something to look forward to, something to grasp onto. Bi weekly trips to Motherwell and Partick Thistle sounds about as much fun as scraping enamel off your teeth. Look, he's 17 years of age and has just two first team games under his belt. He he could well turn out to be a good player, but Juventus and PSG? This guy's only been alive since 2003? Forward, Malcolm, Russian Premier League. I think the hype is, is finally dying down now, but yeah. After flying onto the scene for Bordeaux in 2018, he gets linked with half of Europe, ends up at Barcelona. One league goal in 15 games later, he's getting flogged to Zenit St. Petersburg. He's only just returned from injury to score his first goal in a 7-1 demolition of Ural. But really, this guy is just following in the footsteps of other formerly hyped Bordeaux wingers. I'm still waiting for the day Gabriel Obertan goes back to his home planet. Gabriel Barbosa, Brasileiro. Oh! Oh, Gabby Goal. It's always tough signing players in the Brazilian league. Look, I know that country has a long history of producing world-class talent up front. There's nothing more exciting than the European club appeasing their fans with the signature of a Brazilian number nine. But lads, Joe Linton comes from Brazil. Barbosa is this generation's Leandro de Miao. Yes, a god in his homeland for Internacional. But then the hype dries up. And unlike de Miao, Barbosa has actually been to Europe 
and failed. Yes, he's banging them in for fun at Santos and Flamengo. He's rated as a star in that league. But what did he do in three years at Inter Milan? Nine appearances, one goal. Some players just aren't suited to Europe. So please, no more links to Barcelona and Tottenham. I'd rather stick Captain Barbosa up front than him. And I'm pretty sure he died from scurvy. Joe J1 League. Okay, this guy hasn't been rated about 10 years, but still. What happened to Joe? This guy was an 18 million pound club record signing at Man City in 2008. Tipped as the next great Brazil striker. I mean, yeah, he smacked 25 goals home in his first season for Nagoya Grampus out in Japan. But he then followed up with 6 and 32 last season. Even the Japanese fans think they probably overrated this guy. Yassim Brahimi, Qatar Stars League. Yassim Brahimi. One of the greatest myths of the 21st century. Look, okay, he was a decent winger in five seasons at Porto, sure. And yeah, helped him to an elite title in 2018, but last what was with all the hype? Ricardo Quaresma once tricked me into thinking he was better than Cristiano Ronaldo while he was ripping up defenders at Porto. I proudly proclaimed this in school and was made to look a complete dope. Two years later, Ronaldo wins the Ballon d'Or while Quaresma ended up a sticky brown stain on the bench of Chelsea. I was lucky not to get apples chucked on my head in the school playground for that. Ever since then, I'm I'm cautious about rating talent in the Portuguese league. Like when Brahimi was getting linked to 40 million pound moves to Arsenal, Man City and Liverpool. He's now 30 and stuck in the Guitar Stars League with Al Rayan. I think I was right to be cautious. Luis Suarez Segunda Division. Pretty simple here. Luis Suarez, not that one, is a 22 year old Colombian footballer ripping up the Spanish second tier with Real Zaragoza. 14 goals in 26 games. Terrific! But I'm convinced he was only linked with Barcelona in January because of his goddamn name. He's been a what for three years and never played. Carlos Vela MLS. Young gunner Carlos Vela can be a world class striker, says Arsenal boss Arsene Wenger. Yeah! against putting defences. Sure, Carlos Vela can lie to himself by scoring goals against Perry Kitchen and Brad Guzan, but it's like Declan Donnelly sneaking into a tallest dwarfs competition. Would he really be proud of that medal? MLS defenders are like hyperactive toddlers at a birthday party. Concentration out the window, running around with flailing limbs, and who always look on the verge of throwing up. If you listen to USA fans, Carlos Vela should be winning Ballon d'Ors. I won't argue this guy's stats at Los Angeles FC are record breaking. 57 goals and 24 assists in 71 games. This this man is responsible for 1.14 goals a game. Legendary stuff. Absolute superstar. But there's a guy with just five Premier League goals to his name. Scored a paltry 24 goals in his last 112 games for Real Sociedad. The MLS is a league which makes stars out of Bradley Wright Phillips and Landon Donovan. This is a country where Bob Bradley is heralded as a tactical genius. He lasted 10 bastard games in South Wales. I promise you. If Ben ever turns to Europe at 31 years of age, he will look every inch the guy who was outshined by Simon Cox at West Brom. Anyway, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.